Good morning and welcome to Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church as we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. This Mass is being offered for Arminda Sanabria and the celebrant of this Mass is Father Frank. Please stand as we begin our praise and worship of God. Please join us as we sing our gathering song, Alleluia, Love is Alive. You may follow along using one of our worship aids or the screens throughout the church. Thank you. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Friends, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you calm our troubled hearts. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Bread of Life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be, be, be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments, are liars, and, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them 
in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified, and they thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus I'm going to do a little uh, show and tell, okay? What I'm, holding, <laughs> what I'm holding in my hand right here is my high school yearbook, okay? I want to take a crack at how, when I was, uh, when I graduated, 1997 was when I graduated. Hudson Catholic Regional High School, Jersey City, New Jersey. You have no idea what I would give to go back to 1997. You have no, to be 17 years old again, you have no clue what I would give. It's one of my fantasies. The reason why I love my favorite movies, Back to the Future, because I secretly wish I had a DeLorean in the garage and I could just plug in different dates to go to. 1997 would be one of those dates, right? I didn't realize that when I was 17 years old, though, right? Where would I go? What would I say to myself if I went back to the past, right? What would I say? Listen, uh, everything, all the conflicts you're experiencing, by the way, it gets worse, right? <laughs> would I say that? Um, I probably would say to my past me, my 17-year-old version of me, I would say, listen, things do get better. Just enjoy what you got right now, right? I would tell, that would be my message. So obviously I don't want to pass this around because you know my yearbook picture's in here, right? <laughs> so I don't want to pass it around. And I remember doing this a couple of years ago, showing some people this. So we have the benefit of screens, but I found somebody else in this yearbook, all right, who was a sophomore when I was a senior. And I think some of you might know who he is. So let's take a look at this guy. Father Gino. <laughs> Then and now, he looks the same. He looks the same. He still has, look at it, look at it. Pogi, he, he's a handsome guy. He's got pinchable cheeks. Nothing much has changed. I don't know if he's watching this today, but. Oh, gosh. And of course, you have me. <laughs> Let's look at me. I... <laughs> look at that hair, by the way. I used to dye my hair all different types of colors. I X'd my face out because I thought I was the ugliest thing. And so look at me. Oh my goodness. Maybe I don't want to go back to 1997. But that's then and then next. Well, that's me now. That's actually, no, that's Giovanni Ribisi, the actor. Um, look him up and you'll see. Um, I don't know what, maybe I'll take the me of 2024. Um, but I'll take Giovanni Ribisi's fame and fortune. i uh, definitely take that. But what I really wanted to share in this um, yearbook, you know, maybe you've done it. Uh, we were invited to come up with a quote, right, and to put under a little 
yearbook photo, and I did. I had a quote, um, and so no judgments, okay? Because it, it comes from a, a musical artist, um, and I, I, I love I loved this woman. I love her artistry. I love her music. I love her voice. Um, but it's not a reflection of the type of music I like. Actually, most of the music I like is heavy metal and hard rock. Right? I'm, I'm not listening to Gregorian chant and pipe organ music, okay? I'm just not. I'm pretty eclectic. In 1997, I fell in love with Sarah McLachlan. And um, she has this beautiful track from her album. It's the 30th anniversary now of her album, Fumbling Towards Ecstasy. And the title track from that album, um, I took the bridge, or the, uh, the lyrics from the bridge, and I put it under there, and it goes like this. Peace in the struggle to find peace. Comfort on the way to comfort. It's beautiful. Peace in the struggle to find peace. Comfort on the way to comfort. And it just spoke to me. It really did. It actually speaks to me as I'm saying these, these lines now. It's, it's saying something to me. And some lyrics will do that in songs. They just get you. Like I know at 17, I wanted peace and comfort in life. At 17 years old, and like, you know, and I would say, and sometimes we say this to young people, and it's the rudest thing we could say. Like, what do you know? What do you know what you want in life? Well, you know what? I knew I wanted that. I definitely know I wanted that. What I wanted most of all was peace, to know somehow, through all the conflicts in my life, that things were gonna turn out okay. But at 17, I didn't have trust in the bank, okay? I didn't live the fullness of life yet, right? To know that through the conflicts, through the anxieties and the struggles, that most of the time, you actually turn out Okay, they figure themselves out. When you're at that age, right, what was the context of your conflicts? Right? What was the real world of personal life at 17? I know for me, academic pressures, the conflicts there, the peer pressure, body image was a, that was a main fixation with me. Emotional expression, because I was always an emotive person. I, I was a very, I'm a weepy guy. I, I cry. And you know, we're supposed to be stoic and tough as young men, right? God forbid you show any emotion. No, 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 no. Tough, statuesque, stoic. Identity, future anxieties, relationships, dating. Comparison traps, all those conflicts. So you know what? Yeah, we've experienced a lot. And all of that, in the context of my conflict, I wanted peace and comfort. I wanted to experience peace. Peace in the context of my conflict. I just didn't know. And you know what? I'm going to level with you. I still struggle to find it in the midst of my mess. In the gospel today, you have disciples who are conflicted. And you have reports from other disciples who come to them and say, guess what? Jesus, we saw him. He's risen from the dead. They're still hiding in fear. They're, they're hiding in, in confusion. They're disappointed. They don't readily believe the news. And, and I'm sorry, news like this just doesn't register. People just don't rise from the dead. You don't have a prior experience of that in your life, right? It's completely new information. So they're conflicted and scared. And it's here that Jesus breaks through locked doors and just appears to them and says just one word to them. One word. Peace. That's it. Not where were you? Why'd you abandon me? He simply says the one thing that they were looking for and that they desperately wanted. Right? Peace. I'm here now. Touch me and see, look, 
I'm not even a, 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 a figment. I'm not a figment of your imagination. I'm not a phantom. I'm not a ghost, you know. I have flesh and bone. Come on, come and see me. As a matter of fact, I'll prove it to you. Give me some fish to eat. I'll eat because ghosts don't eat, okay? I'm really here with you right now. Jesus appears in the context of your conflict. But reading this story, we can't just stay focused on their context, right? Because the message is for me. It's meant for us today, like right here, right now, that Jesus appears in the middle of your mess, in the context of your conflict. So let me ask you this, right? Because you are the authority on your life. No one can quite speak about your life the way you can do. You know the storms you're going through. You know the context. You know your conflicts. Right now, what are your conflicts? Not 1997, not 2025, <laughs> but right now. What are the things that are truly stealing your peace? <clears throat> I don't know who said it, but it's another quote that resonates with me. And I I googled it and it comes from different sources. So many people said this or variations of it, so they just chalk it up now to anonymous. But it goes like this. It says, peace doesn't mean the absence of conflict. Does this sound familiar? What comes next? Peace doesn't mean the absence of conflict, but the ability to cope with conflict. You will always have conflict in your life. Always. <laughs> There will always be conflict. The question is, how am I coping with conflict? How am I coping with stress? How am I coping with worry and anxiety? How am I coping with the negative self-talk, right? How am I coping with boundaries? Because, I, I, you know, how's coping with boundaries? How's saying yes to everything, okay? How's that going for you right now? How's coping with comparison? How's the hours of this going for you? You know what that is? Okay, you know, Instagram, TikTok. How's it going for you? Working out well? How am I coping with unresolved limbo living? How am I coping with people? Because that's the biggest stressor right there. People. You know, I've been saying this a lot lately and, and because I'm coming to believe it and see it, right? Most of us wake up in the morning. We put our two feet on the ground. We wake up with great intentions. I, I don't think there's a person in this church today that woke up and said, you know, today, here's my goal. I'm going to wreck my life. I'm going to make every possible bad decision that there is to make. I'm going to wreck my relationship. I'm going to wreck my job. I'm going to create loads of instability. That's my goal by 5 p.m. today. Great intentions. It's not until we start to see other people. They mess it all up. <laughs> Those great intentions, right down the toilet. It's the conflicts we experience with people. Man, like if it wasn't for her, if it wasn't for him, if it wasn't for the situation I find myself with, with them, I'd finally have the peace I was looking for. Finally, right? But there's a lot of things I think we should say when we wake up in the morning. Like today, guess what? I'm not gonna let him get under my skin. I'm just not gonna do it. 
I'm not gonna let this rule my life. I'm gonna trust God a little bit more today than yesterday. I'm gonna try it God's way a little bit more than yesterday, today. But sometimes, you know, (laughs) I'm speaking from personal experience, okay? Maybe even like this morning. Like sometimes we get up and we're already rehearsing lines. We're rehearsing the great comebacks we're going to say today. We're rehearsing the great get-backs, right? Or the in-case-ofs, right? In case she says this to me, I know exactly what to say to her. We rehearse it all, all, all over. The passive-aggressive stuff, the, the proud stuff. You know what I'm learning at 44 years old? You know what I'm learning is that the biggest robber of peace, you want to know who it is? You want to take a guess? Me. You know who's stealing your peace? Frankie, you are. And there's a lot of things that we can do to reverse it. I mean, just think about it. Like, to even think about the, the, to identify what the triggers are, right? You know, Jesus even asked a question to his disciples. He says, why are you troubled? Why? Why do questions arise in your hearts? And now, yes, in, in, for the disciples, it was in the context of their conflict at that given moment. But we can't just stay there because the message is meant for us. It's a great question to ask. Why are you troubled? What's bothering you to identify it and maybe dare to ask the why? After the what or the whom? To challenge the negative self-talk, right? Sometimes we give ourselves, right? To stop stretching yourself. I mean, really, to stop feeling, yeah, you know what? You don't have to say yes to everything, especially when it will compromise. And you know, you know, right? You know right here and right here that's going to compromise your integrity. We don't want to let people down. I gotta say yes, as if the whole, let's talk back to the future, the whole space time continuum depends on your yes. Don't, it don't. We can limit our exposure to things that stress you out. But really, you want peace? Yes or no? Of course you do. Of course you do. Focus on what you can control, the things you can change, maybe even the things you can influence, right? Attitude, habits, goals, priorities, boundaries. But there's one thing you can't control. There's one thing you can't control, people. You can't. Will people upset you? Yes. Will you upset you? Yes. People, you can't control their lives, their emotions, their reactions, their decisions, their beliefs, their their reactions, their opinions of you. Can't control it. You want peace on the way to peace? You want comfort on the way to comfort? You get to create that. You can have peace in the process. You can have comfort in the conflict. You can, you can. How? Maybe something I haven't tried truly is like allowing Jesus to appear in the context of the conflict. Now I said only you can create that, that's half truth, because only Christ can give peace. It's invitational, but it's cooperation. But it's where he chooses to appear in the context of your conflict, and he will simply offer one word to you, Peace. Peace. And even more than that, it's really me. I'm not a ghost. I'm here with you, always. I am really here with you. I am really with you. That gives me some peace. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God the Father sent his only Son into the world so that we might have life through him. We beg him now for the fullness of life as we pray. And may our response to each petition be, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. That those who were baptized at Easter may grow ever stronger in their faith and be powerful witnesses of the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Risen, Risen Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For increased reverence and awe at the gift of the Eucharist, especially as we all prepare for the National Eucharistic Congress in July, we pray to the Lord. Risen, Risen Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For Christian families, that they will sanctify Christ as Lord in our, their hearts and homes, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the world and for the protection of all who risk their lives to defend that peace, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick of our parish, who are a presence of Christ in our midst, that they may be strengthened and consoled by his love, especially Patricia Hogg, Jim Lesko, Tara Lyons, Joel Lusberg, Carmen Reyes, and all the people listed in the bulletin. We pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died recently, that they may find peace in the Christ, especially Robert Shablik, we pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pause just for a moment um, to pray for world peace, especially in the Middle East. We pray to the Lord, risen Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, reveal to us your saving power and preserve us always in your grace. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. Thank you. 
that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and for the of the church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, Michael, our regional bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, and only say the word of my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ, keep me safe, return to life.
Please join us in singing our communion song, The Supper of the Lord.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. From April 27th to June 15th, you're invited to walk through the Bible with the Blessed Mother. Our particulars are in the bulletin. <coughs> Youth Ministry is sponsoring a college night for our high school students. Many Catholic colleges will be present. All are invited. May 16th at 6 p.m. I just want to welcome the... I just want to welcome those who are with us for the first time in a long time, or your first time with us, and you really blessed us with your presence. I do want to thank uh, someone new, on, on one of our new lectors or readers, and his name is Christian. Christian, thank you so much for being here. It's his first time serving today. I think you did a great job. All our ministers, whether greeters or ushers or servers and choir and Eucharistic ministers and lectors, whatever, but all of you made the celebration just a beautiful, beautiful celebration, okay? <laughs> Invite Christ in into your conflicts, okay? That's where he wants to be, not the full and, and, and perfect version of us in our lives. Nope, nope. Since Christmas, he wanted, he, he wanted to dwell in messiness, right, in the manger. This is he, his first act of coming to earth was to prove to us it's not in palaces, not in shiny places, not in highlight reels. It's in the messiness, the realness of us, and he just loves it. Yes, and he will transform it too. That's a great thing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Amen. As we go forth, please join us in singing Alleluia, Alleluia. <laughs>